Ever since the Endbringer video was released, you guys have been asking me, how do we do the other clubs? Is there a method that we can use with other clubs? And while there's not a 100% surefire way to get the ball in the hole with every single club, you can get pretty close. There's a method that's been around for a number of years now that a lot of people are using. And today, I'm gonna show you where to find it and how to use it. So the great thing about the Inbringer School video is that we had a surefire method for determining where to put our slider and then the elevation to adjust our shot in order to get the ball in the hole every single time. And while it's not always that easy with the other clubs, there is a method that we have um, that can get us pretty close, if not exact, to our slider percentage. This is a method that's been around for a couple of years now. A user by the name of Mang Dynasty posted on Reddit a formula for finding our slider percentage based on the amount of rings that we move up from min to mid, from mid to max, and everywhere in between. Now, one of the original streamers of the game, Juan Golf Clash, he came up with an entire spreadsheet with every single club and the number of rings that you move in relation to the slider. Okay, a friend of his by the name of Fawcett Buke actually put it all together into a calculator. And these are probably things that you've seen on Golf Clash Elite or Golf Clash the 19th hole that have been posted around. And maybe you're just not quite sure how to use it. And today we're gonna to look at how to use it. So the first thing I wanna start out with doing for beginner players is just making sure we have a basic understanding of the Golf Clash Caddy app and how the slider works. If you use Golf Clash Notebook, you have the exact same type of slider. So it's no difference there. So let's take a look at exactly what we're looking at when it comes to Clash Caddy. So this is Clash Caddy. Okay, you can see we have the three areas that tell us the min distance of the club in gray we have the mid distance of the club in blue and we have the max distance of the club in red now you'll notice as we enter a win we'll just enter 10 in wind we have our elevation set to zero we're going to get to that in a little bit but you can see the numbers that we get the number on the left is how many rings to adjust when you are at absolute min the number in the middle now is your slider. Okay, so you can see that number in the middle is changing based on the mid percentage of my slider. And that's the slider that we're going to be trying to get the most accurate today. Okay, so you can see if I put it all the way down at min, 0%, the number now matches the number on the left. If I put it up to 100, now you can see it's going to match the number on the right. And the cool thing about Clash Caddy is we can adjust this max to go all the way up. So for some of those inbringer shots and things like that, that's really helpful to be able to adjust all the way past max. There you can see it's at 110%. We can go all the way to 200%. But that's besides the point right now. So what we're going to look at is how do we find, whenever we're aiming our shot, how do we know exactly where to put this slider when we don't have notes in front of us or we don't have yardages that tell us that information how do we find that out for ourselves? so let's look at the calculator that Foset Butte put together because it's going to help us get that number exact so when you click on the link in the description below it is going to take you to google to google sheets it's going to ask you to log in, so you're going to need a Google login, and it's going to make you a copy of this calculator. Okay, so you'll have this calculator at your disposal whenever you like it. It'll be in your Google Drive. Okay, so let's take a look at the numbers and what they mean. The numbers on the right-hand side, okay, are all going to be um, constant numbers that we can basically take a screenshot of and we can learn for our exact club. Okay, moving all the way over here to the right. Let's take a look at the Sniper 10. This column right here. Second column. We look all the way to the right. This is going to tell us that from men, Sniper 10, from its minimum distance, 
okay each ring that we move is going to be worth this percentage of the slider so when we move the sniper 10 one ring up from men that's going to be two and a half 2.6 percent of the slider all the way up until it gets to 25 percent okay so if we look on the right here for or, or, or further left here at this column we know from zero to 25 percent okay we need to move nine and a half rings with the sniper 10. if we move the sniper 10 nine and a half rings up from minimum distance we know we're going to set our our true slider to 25 percent okay if we look here this is telling us now when we go from 25 percent once we're at 25 percent and we want to move it up to 50 percent each ring is now going to be worth 2.8 percent and the reason the number gets bigger is because as we move up from min to max the rings actually become bigger okay so it's 2.8 percent each ring is worth that amount of the slider and then when you get to mid it becomes three percent of the slider for every ring you move and then from 75 percent to 100 percent of your club it becomes 3.2 and that's just because the rings do get larger as you move them up from minimum distance up to maximum distance okay so the middle one number of rings to move from is the one i would recommend that you memorize for your club because that's going to be the most helpful for you on the fly so i just memorize now that from zero percent to 25 percent i'm going to move nine and a half rings up from men and i know i'm at 25 percent slider from there if i need to go up to mid then i'm going to move an additional 8.9 rings and that will put me at absolute um, mid club now the calculator part of this is to where you're not really sure you don't have it memorized and so we clear these off well, we, we have them blank here you can see from men nothing's entered so it's showing me zero from max it's showing me 100 so this is if the, the the top number here is if i'm moving my club up from minimum distance i'm starting at men and i'm moving x amount of rings up okay so i'm taking a shot or i took a shot in a tournament and, and i moved my rings let's say i moved my rings 15 rings up from minimum distance this is telling me now on the left i moved 15 rings up from men and so i'm at 41 percent slider on my sniper 10 okay if i want to go the other way if i want to start at maximum distance and i want to move 15 rings down from maximum distance now this is telling me my sniper 10 slider should be at 54 percent and that's the way i recommend using this if you know you're below uh mid then you need to count up from min to mid if you know you're you're up closer to maximum distance you're going to need to start counting down rings um, and that's what's going to make you more accurate so let's take a look here at exactly how you would you would count rings in a in a real playing type scenario okay so right off the bat what you're going to want to do whatever club you're using there's our maximum distance maximum distance of the sniper you can pull it all the way down there's our minimum distance of our sniper now if we want to be able to put this sniper at 25 percent slider we start at min and then we move up our nine and a half rings so we just simply move up count nine and a half rings and now we know our sniper is at 25 percent club if we wanted to go the opposite way for example with the sniper we can put our sniper at max and now we know the number to move from if we moved nine and a half rings down from max for example according to this calculator when we move nine and a half rings down from max the calculator tells us we are at 70 percent slider we adjust our spin after that to the hole wherever we need to be 
and we can get a little bit more accurate. Say we only need to move back five rings from max. If we move back five rings from max, we type in five on our calculator, and that's going to tell us now our slider is at 84% slider. And so we can adjust anywhere that we want to be able to find wherever our club is based on how many rings that we count back either from max back or from men up. Take a look at a different club. Maybe we want to go to RB52. We find men of RB52. Okay. And let's just say our landing spot, we want to move around 20 rings up from minimum distance. So we just count. There's our 10 and there's our 20. So now B52 seven, we moved it up 20 rings. So we type that into our calculator and now we know that B52-7 is at 22% slider. We adjust our spin, we aim it at the hole, we know we're at 22% slider, and then from there, it's all about elevation, which we're gonna talk about next. So elevation is a term that gets thrown around loosely, okay? What we call elevation is, in all reality, the secondary wind effect that the wind has on our ball guide okay and so depending on the wind strength depending on the wind direction you may play it at a true this shot is 10 percent downhill okay but depending on on the wind strength if it's headwind if it's tailwind you're gonna have to start adding percentages to your elevation to account for the secondary wind effect of the ball. And unfortunately, with elevation, it's all trial and error. You can know for a fact that you have your slider at 25%. You can know with your sniper that you're nine and a half rings up from men, and I know I'm at 25% slider, but the elevation you just may not have correct. And so that's where practice and knowing the holes that you're playing it is the most important thing that you can do because it changes one shot in headwind. You may play at 10% elevation at that minimum distance. The next one you may have to play at 30% based on the wind strength, based on the, uh, on the direction of the wind. So it's just one of those things that you have to play around with and that you have to dial in. But we know using the calculator that we can get our true slider percentage correct. And like I said, the best way is to memorize those numbers basically from men up to 25% and men to mid. And that's gonna help you the most where you don't have to click back and forth to a calculator all the time. It's just there for a reference to help you. So you learn those numbers, you take screenshots, you memorize them, and you're gonna be able to get pretty close out there on the course. What I wanna do right now is my friend, Bosette Buke, he sent me some replays of him, the creator of this calculator, playing some of these shots. And we're gonna look at them and we're gonna see in real time, in real situations, how this calculator and how counting the rings is used. All right, so first shot we're gonna take a look at. We have the Thorn 7 in the bag. We got the Thorn 7 here at maximum distance. We want to find our aiming spot, which is going to end up being 11 rings short of max distance. We got 11 rings from max. It's going to put our slider with the Thorn 7 at 81% slider here. So we can type that into our app, 81% slider here. We're going to play it plus 10% elevation. Type that in, get our adjustment. We're going to adjust 3.4 rings. Make our adjustment. Pull it back. We're going to try to hit perfect as usual. Gets a nice roll up, bounce, goes in the hole, dead center. Next one we're going to take a look at. My man's got the Sniper 10 in the bag, so we're gonna go at maximum distance with the Sniper 10. And here we're gonna pull back now eight rings. Gonna pull back eight rings, he counted them out. Find his landing spot, spin the ball to the hole. We know at eight rings with the Sniper 10 from max, we're gonna be at 75% slider. 
So right there, 74, 75%. He's gonna adjust 3.4 rings. This particular shot, he's gonna play at minus 30% elevation. He's gonna pull back. He's gonna have a hard time hitting the sniper perfect because that's just the way it goes. But he's gonna get his perfect and it's gonna get a nice rollout. We know it's right. As long as we got the elevation right, it's gonna be close. This one goes in. It's a nice shot. All right, so next shot, we have the Falcon 4 in here. And now we're at minimum distance with the Falcon 4, but we can't shoot at minimum distance. We have to push up. We're gonna push up five rings here. We're gonna count it out. And we know five rings from men is going to be 5% slider. We set that slider to 5%. We add our elevation, whatever that may be for that hole. We make our adjustment. In this case, it's 2.2 .2 rings. We make our adjustment of 2.2 .2 rings. We know we're at 5% slider. In this case, we're going at minus 10 elevation. We pull back, we take our shot, and I'm telling you, it's gonna be the closest that you've probably ever been using the, the correct slider for that hole. One last one we'll take a look at here. We have the Hornet level nine in at maximum distance. We're gonna pull back here, 15 rings, from maximum distance, we count it out. We make sure it's right. We get our landing spot. Here, we're gonna go ahead and spin the ball to the hole. In this case, we know 15 rings from max with the Hornet level nine is gonna put our slider at 85%. So we go 85% slider. We make our adjustment. In this case, it's gonna be eight and a half rings. Make our adjustment. Pull back. And if you're not using this method right now, there's probably nothing else that's going to make you more accurate and get you closer to the hole and getting you winning more tour games and getting those drops. Oh, yeah. Hey, so there you go, guys. A surefire way for you to assess your exact landing spot and the slider that you need to be using perfectly for all of your clubs. Don't forget, look in the description below for the link to that calculator for you to be able to start putting into practice, get out there and get those drops. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Turn on your bell notifications and let me know in the comment section what you think. How's it going for you guys? Stick around for more Golf Clash content. See you guys out on the course.